Când în țările de jos s-a anunțat cine anume va conduce guvernul de coaliție din regat, a apărut și o glumă. Tu poate nu știi cine este domnul, dar el cu siguranță știe cine ești tu. Asta pentru că premierul olandez este fostul șef al serviciilor secrete. Lăsând gluma la o parte, noua guvernare are în componență pentru prima oară în istoria țării un partid de extremă dreaptă cu viziuni deloc favorabile democrației liberale. Ce înseamnă acest lucru pentru unitatea Uniunii Europene? Discutăm cu Wilhelmin Van Haften, ambasadorul regatului țărilor de jos la București. Sunt Cristina Cileacu, începe pașaport diplomatic. Wilhelmine van Haffen, ambassador of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Romania, welcome to Diplomatic Passport. Thank you very much. Thank you. Un fost șef de servicii de inteligență care nu aparține vreunui partid, conduce un guvern în componența căruia sunt patru formațiuni politice, între care una de extremă dreapta și alta populistă. Această coaliție de guvernare conduce țările de jos. Extremiștii și populiștii au avut câștig de cauză în alegerile din acest an, dar negocierile pentru formarea unui guvern au durat aproape șapte luni, pentru că ideologiile partidelor care și-au împărțit ministerele sunt foarte diferite. Ambassador, all the uh, democratic countries uh, now are being ruled by uh, governments that are composed of uh, coalitions. In case of the Netherlands, you have uh, four parties composing a government and the prime minister is a formal head of the secret service, not affiliated to any political party. But the main party in this coalition, in, uh, in the case of your country, is the extreme right party. Um, how did the Dutch go from strong liberalism to the extreme right? Actually, the government indeed, as you said, is a coalition uh, government, so there are four parties in this coalition. Uh, it's a, it's a center-right coalition. Um, the uh, uh, Freedom Party of Mr. Geert Wilders that you are referring to is, uh, is one of the four, uh, but there is three other ones, including the Liberal Party, uh, the Farmers Party, uh, BBB, Um, and also a new party, um, uh, so all four of them together uh, are forming this, uh, this center-right government. I think um, there are a number of problems in society um, that made people uh, maybe vote slightly differently than they did last time. Um, but you also have to bear in mind that, uh, that there are four parties in this coalition, so there is not one party that has a majority in the parliament, it's really for a four-party government uh, and they make policies uh, together in the end, which are uh, still uh, partially liberal because they are, uh, they are part of a center-right government. They indeed are a bit more liberal uh, maybe than uh, the coalitions that we've had in the past. Speranță, curaj și mândrie. Acesta este numele programului de guvernare propus cetățenilor olandezi de coaliția care conduce țara și regulile mai dure împotriva migrației ilegale sunt prioritare. De asemenea, pentru că în regata a apărut o formațiune politică nouă, Partidul Fermierilor, creată chiar de fermierii revoltați de regulamentele Uniunii Europene privind protecția mediului și cerințele lor sunt tratate cu mare atenție de guvernanți. Ce înseamnă asta pentru unitatea Uniunii Europene. One promise that uh, the new government of uh, the Netherlands uh, had for the citizens is the fact that uh, they want to pull the country out of the European Migration Pact. Does this mean that the Dutch people are less tolerant now? Or sh how shall we see it? <laughs> um, I think the Dutch population is sensing that the pressure from migration is increasing in society. Uh, this new coalition government uh, has promised that it would uh, aim for the most comprehensive uh, migration policies ever. Um, the first and, 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 and most important thing that they are aiming for is the quick implementation of the European Asylum and Migration Pact, because that is, that is agreement within the European Union. They feel bound to those and they think that if uh, uh, these rules are implemented quick, then this may ease a bit the pressure on, uh, on the Dutch uh, uh, migration situation. 
in the longer term, um, it is the wish of this government to look into the possibility of an opt-out. Um, but everybody also knows, and the government knows, that an opt-out is only on the agenda when uh, some treaty changes uh, in the EU are on the agenda. And that is currently not the case. But this type of opt-out uh, doesn't uh, weaken the European Union at, uh, at, as a whole? Uh, I think really the opt-out is a, is a long-term project. What is now important is that they uh, really want to concentrate on the quick implementation of the Asylum and Migration Pact as it has been agreed, uh, with rules that uh, have been agreed in the EU and that are therefore within the boundaries of this, of this Asylum and Migration Pact. And that is their first priority, their first and also short-term priority. Can you please explain for the Romanian public what exactly is the problem with migration in your country? I mean, uh, how come uh, this government um, headed the, to this conclusion that uh, migration must be slowed down or even stopped? I don't think the, uh, the government means migration in general to stop, not at all. We have a, uh, the Netherlands is a very open economy, so uh, we also need migration uh, in order for our economy to, to continue to run. And we need migration in the whole of the EU uh, uh, in order for the, for, the, for the European economy to function. What is being felt as a burden is uh, some problematic areas with um, uh, irregular migration. Um, people that come in uh, to the Netherlands and that have no right to stay um, and then cannot be returned to their country of origin, for instance. And uh, those um, irregular migrants putting pressure on the social system, on the housing system, that is being felt uh, increasingly, and it is something that has been building up over a number of years, uh, as, as, as a burden on society. So that is, what, that is the part of migration that the, Dutch, the new Dutch government uh, would like to, to limit and, and put a hold to, not a uh, limit on migration in general, because there is very many different kinds of migration, but it is the irregular, so to say, illegal migration that they want to curb. Another th uh, promise that uh, the current government uh, made is the fact that uh, they also want to take into account the protest of the farmers, of the Dutch farmers. We saw that a new party appeared in your country uh, after these protests or be in between these protests. But that means that uh, the EU regulations regarding the environment are also something that the Dutch want to have in their own way. How is this going to be? Actually, that is another promise that the government uh, made to put uh, more emphasis again on uh, sustainable farming and a sustainable living for uh, farmers in the Netherlands. Um, but also there, uh, not outside the boundaries of existing EU legislation. So they are currently looking into uh, how can they combine um, support to farmers uh, and uh, support to rural areas, uh, making sure that farmers have uh, a decent income out of their farm, uh, making sure that far farmers can plan in the longer term how to de develop their farms, um, while at the same time um, not transgressing uh, also uh, the agreements that have been made in, in the area of nature and, and for example uh, CO2 uh, emissions and, uh, and all of those things. So that is, uh, there have not been any new uh, rules or regulations issued on this point. Um, but there are a number of, uh, of, of, of areas where uh, the government has promised to pay more attention to the situation of farmers. Liderul partidului de extremă dreaptă, Hert Wilders, nu este și membru al guvernului, deși a câștigat alegerile. Dar ideile sale influențează guvernarea și chiar dacă acum nu mai dorește o ieșire din Uniunea Europeană, acesta a declarat că își dorește să erodeze Uniunea Europeană din interior. Like in the case of migration as well, when we look at the environment uh, uh, regulations, the question is the same. Uh, if all of us, all the 27 members of the European Union, will have their own way of interpreting the regulations and the rules of we all agreed upon, isn't uh, the European Union a weaker one after that? 
Well, I think um, it is really important to bear in mind that the government wants to make policies and rules that stay within the framework of what has been agreed. So it is not a government that says we want to go outside uh, the agreements that have been made. It is a government that says we want uh, serious implementation of the rules as, as we have uh, been agreeing uh, on them because that will make our European Union stronger and it will also make the Netherlands within the European Union stronger. So it is not a matter of weakening uh, the European Union at all, it is a matter of implementing policies that have been agreed on um, and thereby uh, also strengthening the European Union as a whole. And in that um, framework, uh, I think we should also look at the cooperation, for example, between uh, Romania and the Netherlands, because there are many areas and, and farming and, and the development of uh, sustainable agriculture and sustainable food production within the EU is an, uh, an area which we both have uh, an interest in. So we can find each other and we can complement each other uh, in, those, in those areas within the EU and make each other and ourselves uh, stronger. And from your knowledge, uh, do we do that? And we do that. I think we do that. Uh, we have already some very nice examples, for example, of Dutch farmers who have come to Romania. Uh, we are developing um, horticultural uh, uh, projects um, where Dutch farmers and also Romanian farmers can learn from each other and can develop. Uh, and I think that sort of cooperation is very important. Uh, and, and, and we should continue it in order to, in order to increase uh, food production in the EU in general uh, and also in order to help each other find sustainable ways to, to make food because that is the, that's the important issue. Another um, issue on the list of uh, priorities or topics to be changed uh, created by uh, the Dutch government is the fact that uh, they want to uh, decrease the number of uh, foreign students. The places in universities in the Netherlands for the foreign students will be uh, reduced. That could impact as well the uh, Romanian students because your country become, after the Brexit, a spot for uh, students to go and continue their uh, university um, uh, studies. Will this affect Romanian uh, stu students? Romanian students are, um, like many other international students, uh, come to the Netherlands because we have a, uh, an education system uh, which, is, which is very open and it has a, a good standing internationally and indeed there are about 7,000 I think at this moment Romanian students in the Netherlands. Um, what has happened with our education system over the past decades is that um, it has, in cer certain areas, the number of uh, foreign students increased so much that it has reached uh, almost half of the total uh, of students in those areas. And there is now, and it is not something new because the previous government already started uh, to look into this issue, um, the government wants to make legislation to uh, make it possible for universities to limit uh, the number of foreign students in certain areas. So it will not impact the students who are already in the Netherlands and there will also be continuous uh, space for international students and for international talent. Uh, but in certain areas there may be a more restricted influx uh, in the coming years, yes, that's true. Um, but if you, uh, if you allow me to add, um, Romanian talent is really very much appreciated, both in the Netherlands, uh, uh, st Romanian students who studied in the Netherlands uh, in very many uh, uh, cases find jobs also in the Netherlands and, and have a very positive contribution to the Dutch economy. Um, but also in Romania, where Dutch companies find talented Romanians to, 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 to build their, their companies upon. And that is another example of, of um, strengthening both our countries uh, inside the EU in further strengthening the European economy as a whole. 
De când rușii au început războiul ilegal în Ucraina, olandezii au reacționat rapid și au trimis pe flancul estic, mai precis în România, militari și sub umbrela NATO. Mai mult, piloții ucraineni învață să piloteze avioane F-16 cu implicarea țărilor noastre, iar planurile comune sunt mai ample de atât. The best example is the fact that both our country cooperate quite a lot, at least recently, in the field of defense, uh, considering the war that uh, the Russians started illegally in Ukraine. The new government of the Netherlands promised that they will uh, remain behind Ukraine as long as uh, um, it's necessary. And then again, Romania and the Dutch are working together, uh, especially for training the uh, F-16 pilots of Ukraine. How come we become so close together in this field? Because when Russia illegally invaded uh, Ukraine, there was an increased uh, uh, understanding uh, in the Netherlands very quickly Uh, that we actually needed to do two things, um, and that was, it is not a bilateral issue alone, it is of course something which is very much also uh, related to both our countries being part of NATO, both our countries being part of the EU, um, but there is two issues that needed to be done uh, and to be uh, done relatively quickly. One of them was to strengthen the eastern flank of NATO, And the second one was to support Ukraine. And we are very much aligned in both of these issues, Netherlands and Romania. So we very quickly found each other. Um, and uh, the Dutch came, for example, uh, in the French-led battle group uh, in Chinku uh, with a number of, uh, of people. Uh, there are a number of other um, defense uh, uh, issues and, 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 and examples of, the, of, of cooperation in the, in the defense sphere which are aimed towards the strengthening of the eastern NATO flank. And then there is indeed, as you say, uh, the support of, uh, of Ukraine, where we also found each other. And there, um, one of the projects that we both participate in, although it is again not a bilateral project, because there is uh, also Denmark and, and the Americans, um, in the European F-16 Training Center, um, which is aimed to um, train both um, Romanian and Ukrainian uh, F-16 uh, fighter pilots. Uh, it helps Romania in making the transition quicker towards F-16 um, uh, airplane, and it helps Ukraine in uh, training their pilots uh, because the Netherlands is also part of the, of the uh, F-16 alliance, as we call it, with a number of other countries providing F-16s to Ukraine, and for that they need, uh, they need the pilots. So this is another example of a very successful way in which I think two countries which are relatively far apart in the EU Um, and which are different in and very many ways. And yes, don't have much in common. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we do have more in common than we think sometimes. Um, but it is very nice to see that these, uh, that these corporations uh, flourish so, uh, so nicely. Yeah. Recently, the uh, Secretary General of uh, NATO um, uh, position was taken by uh, also a Dutchman, uh, your former Prime Minister Mark Rutte, took over the position on the 1st of October. Shall we watch, in your view only, uh, a more uh, practical NATO? I would really... Um I would really enjoy if that could be the case because I think the existing uh, projects that we are doing together are, are very successful. So I really wish and hope and work a little bit uh, that we can do more of practical NATO, yes. They say that uh, the Dutch character is uh, being uh, strengthened by the fact that uh, in your history you always um, um, had to fight against waters and to fight with waters as well. The Netherlands are very good at controlling waters, uh, while in the Eastern uh, European and um, Central European we witnessed even recently um, strong floods and uh, Romania has this problem for quite um, some time now. Are we working together in this field? Does anyone from the Romanian authorities ask for uh, the Dutch help in this particular uh, area? Yes, 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 and already for a long time. And I, first of all, I want to say that uh, these floods were, of course, really terrible. Um, and our heartfelt thoughts are really with the, with the victims and their families. Um, because the cooperation that we have in this area is really aimed towards uh, avoiding this in the future. 
Uh, and I think we have to bear in mind that with climate change, um, water is becoming more and more of, a, of an issue. Um, but of course, uh, Romania has, has the Danube, it has the Danube Delta, it has mountains, it has many important rivers as well. So there has been a long-standing cooperation uh, which we call the Blue Deal, which dates back really to the 1990s, where both our water authorities are involved in many different projects in the area of water management, uh, uh, flood control, preparing how to adapt to new climatical circumstances, um, how to um, make uh, agriculture and river beds go together. There, is, there are many, many project examples of, uh, of, of in, in that area as well between both our countries. Yes. I have this book uh, and I brought it specifically for this filming. It's called Why the Dutch are uh, Different. Uh, and it's uh, an expression of uh, the character of, uh, of your people. But uh, since this book is not yet translated in Romania, maybe somebody will at some point. Can you uh, make a short resume of how the Dutch people are? And that's a very interesting question. And I have to think. Um, I have to think about what my husband tends to say. My husband is from Germany uh, and he tends to compare the Dutch and I think he's very right. Um, he tends to say we are a small country and we have always lived from trade. So I think one of the most striking things in the Dutch, um, how should I put it, general uh, um, uh, way of being is that we are uh, we try to find the compromise, we try to find practical solutions, uh, and we are open to the world uh, in order to, um, to cooperate. Um, and we try to find win-win situations. And I think that is really also what is defining uh, the cooperation nowadays between Romania and, and the Netherlands. Um, we do that too. We try to find win-wins, we try to cooperate together, um, and yes, we try to, to always work for the, for the mutual interest of both. Ambassador, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you very much, you're most welcome. Thank you. Atât pentru astăzi, dar rămânem în continuare online pe pagina de Facebook a emisiunii și pe contul nostru de X. Revenim cu subiecte noi din lumea diplomației și a politicii externe, vinerea viitoare de la 11.30 și reloare sâmbătă după miezul nopții. La revedere!